Welcome to the Unearthed Man Podcast, the journey becoming a conscious man, hosted by Milva. Hey all, Milvo here, and welcome to episode 25 of the Unearthed Man Podcast. For those that listened into last week's podcast with Ryan Jackson, I'm certain that you enjoyed his openness about his journey, and I loved his parting message of just learning to surrender. I always enjoy the opportunity to chat to international guests with the view of having many more on next year. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, then welcome aboard. If you're one of my long-time listeners, then welcome back. I really appreciate your ongoing support. If you're looking to know more about The Unearthed Man, then you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Now for today's episode. I've known my guest today for around 15 years and have interacted with him on a regular basis over that period of time. I reached out to him recently to seek some personal feedback, and one of his key items was how little I'd inquired about him, his life, and his journey. This struck a chord with me as I realized how shallow our conversations had been. As soon as I started the podcast, and based on this feedback, he was on my guest list as I knew there was a lot more to him. We caught up a couple of weeks ago and chatted for over two hours about him, his journey, and our relationship. It was an amazing chat. I'm proud to call this man my brother-in-law and love him deeply. Welcome to the Unearthed Man podcast, David Patmore. Hey, mate. Hey, Steve. How you doing? Good. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for uh, agreeing to come onto the podcast and uh, have a chat with us. Oh, absolute pleasure. So um, I actually, it's interesting because we did that, uh, you know, I reached out to you uh, when I was sort of on, on part of my journey was to, to go to three or four men and, and ask, you know, three questions. How am I showing up in a relationship? Uh, how, am, how am I not showing up in a relationship? And, you know, what's a challenge I can move forward? And your, your feedback to me about how I wasn't showing up in a relationship was um, I tended to probably – jump in a little bit at me and what's happening in my life, but never really sat down and said, Hey Dave, you know, tell me a bit more about you and, and what's going on in your life. And uh, I just think that that was some beautiful, very open, honest feedback. So uh, th- thanks for providing that, mate. Yeah. Well, you know, that sort of feedback, sometimes you've got to be a bit brave, don't you? You know, because when you've known someone for a while and then you you're honest with your feedback with them, you, you're actually, it's actually a risk response, isn't it? You know, it's just, <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen after that. And uh, but I think it was probably, if I can reflect on that, it, it was probably more a convergence of your journey and my journey. And and even though perhaps in your life where you had been and what I guess was top of your mind consciousness and where you were travelling in life and where I was going, even though it may appear to be in sort of different trajectories. Uh, I, I think that your journey and and certainly where we, we've been going and I've been going as an individual had a lot of commonalities and, and I think that conversation probably was the flashpoint of just really um, recognising that there were there were probably a lot more in common to us than, than we perhaps had realised as you were discovering more about who you were. Yeah, no, and it's actually pretty true. Once you... Once you move yourself into that world of more open awareness and one, you're actually open to receive the feedback, um, you're right. The, you realize how many probably assumptions and, and how much you've made perceptions about other people, about maybe what their lives are and, and where they're heading. And, and as soon as you start to open up, you the the willingness to be able to have those open conversations actually becomes a good opportunity for both. And I, and I think that, as you probably alluded to, you've probably felt that I was more in a position to be more open to, to have those conversations with you and, and who you are and, and, you know, where your journey has come from and where you're heading as well. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, our interaction has been at a family level. So at some respects, I'd imagine from your, your podcast audience, this might be a little bit different in that respect, a bit more sort of mm. intimate for you and me because we've known each other for that long on a family context and, and family is always fraught with all sorts of interesting dynamics, and I think that you uh, and I have interacted on that level. And and the the spiritual side and the awareness side of life was not something that you would completely sort of tuned into at that time. I guess with everyone though, I think everyone is whether they realise it or not. And I think there's a lot of sort of intuitiveness that goes on in our lives that we may not use the term spiritual or aware or those sorts of things, but we actually are operating that way. 
Uh, mm. And, you know, the good things that have happened in your life, the things that you've sort of drawn into your life, the things that sort of have opened up for you are often coming out of that space, even if you haven't sort of consciously acknowledged it. Uh, and so I think everyone is spiritual, you know, everyone has that, whether they've, they've you know, sort of consciously acknowledged it or not. Uh, and so really, you know, because I believe we're all spirit beings, firstly, you, you, you've you always been that way. It's just that you've discovered those things about yourself as, as we do as we go along, as, you know, we're discovering things every day and how you tie that into or what label you give that you know, that's part of your journey too because words are important because they articulate feelings, they articulate our consciousness, they articulate, you know, what we're sensing or, or how we're framing things or how we're looking at relationships. And so when you find language that's fitting where you're at and where you're going, then you find that is the conduit and how you start to connect with people because mm-hmm. other people resonate maybe with those words or have a similar understanding. It's like, you know, sometimes we say a word and even though uh, we may not give definition to that word, there's already an understood meaning to that because the language is familiar to us. So we, so that you know, it's a bit like when you work as you would do in a work culture, uh, and as I do, you know, there's there's a, there's a language that happens in a unique work culture, and I'm sure you've seen that as you've moved around from different jobs that you know there's different languages that happen within those work cultures and so there's a lot that doesn't need to be said because people have a a, an already existing pre-understanding of what those words really mean I think in life in our relationships that's that's that that can be sort of what happens and so our language was very family language you know uh, and everything that surrounded that and it never really got into the personal development side to the, the spiritual side of things which is largely been a big part of you know I guess my journey which I would suspect that as you started opening up to that it, it it's like it opened your eyes to those sort of things going on in other people's lives oh absolutely and you know I just want, want to take uh, the audience back um particularly from a family point of view Dave and I caught up for for dinner there'd been some other stuff had been going on within um my wife and her family sides, but so David and I are the, the in-laws in this family. And, um, and so. I normally say with the we're, outlaws, Steve. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it feels that way every now and then. And there'd been stuff that uh, had been taking place both for uh, my sister-in-law, so David's wife and, and my wife. And so um, we got together at, at a restaurant and, and we were having a bit of a chat. And the one thing that interestingly where I was, not closed off, but always stuck with me is that David actually started to speak to me a bit about, you know, there's an aura about who I am and there's an aura about me, you know, that there's a greater um, purpose for me and it's about providing service and it's about being able to, you know, support people. And, and at that point in time, you know, I was completely closed off, but interestingly, I think as David just spoke about somewhere deep inside that triggered something. And there was always something that I, I wanted to come back with Dave and have that chat about, about, you know, what that actually meant and what he'd actually been able to pick up from me, which also was the first, um, I suppose, where Dave first alluded to me that he had an ability to see more about others than what they could probably see about themselves. Um, so, that, that experience, though, let's just drop back into that because I know in our previous chat, you know, there's courage that it took from you again on that aspect for us to have had that conversation, you knowing where I was from uh, my, my own spiritual journey and where you were at just to be able to have that conversation with me. Yeah, look, uh, relationships are risky because um, we're constantly making, you know, risk assessment decisions about where we go in a relationship and I think even in our own personal relationships like with our with our partners and children and all those sorts of things because I think we all know that there's you know some areas of people's lives uh, particularly if they they've got hurt or wounds that sit around that it's like walking into a to a, a landmine field you know and and you and if you're conscious of that you sort of actually make a risk assessment decision on that and go well do I actually want to go in there? Uh, do I actually want to step on those things and actually, you know, <laughs> cause the chaos? Uh, it'd be much e- easier for me and the, and the impact to me is going to be a lot easier if I don't walk into that minefield. 
Uh, and so, yeah, I remember that night uh, being pretty tough because those those sort of were very emotional issues and and um, and a lot of history attached to them. And yep. it just so happened that those things had come to me and I felt a responsibility to communicate that. So I guess it was really our first connection at a, at a more uh, deeper level that certainly had potentially a lot of negative impact. Uh, mm. And so then having them sitting down, it, t- it take you make that risk assessment. Uh, but I, I think this, and I'm going to use the word love, I think probably the more pure form of love is the honest part of love, which isn't always the most um, digestible part of the word. Uh, yep. we, we often, because, you know, as far as how we want to be loved, you know, we want unconditional love. We don't want to be judged. We want to be accepted for who we are uh, and all of those things that go around that. But on the other side of it, when you've actually got to bring let's call it a corrective love, I think that's one of the riskiest types of love because it's perceived as not being love to the other person. And mm, yes. it's because you're you're giving me, you're telling me something about myself I don't want to hear. And, and so talking about being brave and actually having those conversations with people, and I'm not always perfect in that. There's <laughs> many times I've chickened out, you know, uh, because you just know you're going to step, you know, th- this one's not just a landmine. This is nuclear if I go in here. Yeah. So we're we're, we're going to set off World War. So, yeah, you don't go in. Uh, and there is a bit of wisdom with that sometimes too. So there's timings and things, but that's, you know, getting getting sidetracked. The, the, the key thing with, with, with um, feedback let's use that word, is that it's bittersweet, isn't it? I know that when I've got feedback from people, um, it's sweet because it actually brings truth and it actually brings accountability if I receive it in the right manner. Uh, But it's hard because sometimes I don't don't, don't want to hear that I'm crap in one area, you know. Uh, I don't want to hear that, yeah, you know, in that area you're you're a bit of a shit person, you know, so I I don't want to hear that. (laughs) That's right. I don't like hearing that. But sometimes that's the best thing to hear because because it actually um, provokes something within you and 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 I've tried to take this on um, in life and that is even with people that I don't particularly get along with when they give me feedback I've tried to actually listen to them and go okay is there any truth to that you know even if I don't like the way they brought it or their their own motivations is there any truth to what they're saying is there something that I, I actually need to and I've tried to take that more, I guess, open, honest way with myself. Um, It's hurtful, but that's where I've gone. So I understand, and I guess I've built that up to say that when I spoke to you that night, it wasn't without a sort of an awareness of of the potential, uh, you know, uh, fallout that can happen. Um, Mm. And, and, but in, in all of that, I guess I felt like, let's call it a portal opened up where uh, I was able to see into your life and a lot of the untapped part of who you really are as a spirit being, let's call it that, uh, that you have um, a greater purpose before you and just the preoccupations of where your life was at at the moment emotionally and physically and responsibility-wise, you weren't sort of tuning into that. And we are our best forms of ourself when we're more purpose-driven rather than, uh, you know, necessarily just task driven or, or responsibility driven. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, what we were talking about that night was more into the place of mission and purpose. Like in other words, what, what is the best value that you bring to the planet? What it is, what is unique about you that actually is here to actually help others and build something that, that obviously as we look around us and see all the, the, the shit fight that goes on and all the, the crap that just goes on in the in the world of, of just people just in their fear and anxiety and need to control and and all the stuff that that we see particularly I think you know certainly in my time on the planet um, I would say this is one of the most intense times I've viewed in that respect yes. uh, and so we need more of people being able to come out of a of a of a, of a greater sense of selflessness uh, and and to take some of their own journey and help others because you know we're all connected at some level and and I think sometimes I've found um like uh my story and journey for what is as I'm sure you know I mean the podcast for you is an absolute testament of that 
that you know the aspect of the the guests that you have on and the and the stories that they tell and and the stories that you have told about your life you know you never know who's listening and it could be just someone sitting there who's just going like man that was meant for me like that just resonated with me and opens up their brain to uh, you know potentially hope potentially new opportunity whatever that might be and and they start seeing their circumstances differently and I guess that was a moment for us where I came in and said hey you got you got more of this that you actually you know are going to help people and going to do stuff and build people and you've got you know incredible things about you that are that are going to bring value into other people's lives and and you know I, I didn't see that in the form of how you necessarily the medium, uh, yes. you know, as such, but but more the essence, and you know, so it's great that all these years later, I don't even know how long ago that was, um, several years ago, to yes. see where you're at now and what you're doing and and how you're reaching people, you know, that's amazing. Yeah, no, th- uh, thanks, mate. And um, you yeah, know, some of us are probably just slower learners than others. I think <laughs> that's okay. We, some of us get there eventually, and but I think it's all for, for on that point. Um, it's actually all about we need to land at the right place at the right time. So, so as I said, that always had stuck with me. There was something that that still that chord stuck with me about what you had said, and deep down, I felt that that was correct. But again, it's not it's not knowing what that looked like or what that meant. And and I think that's part of the journey that we all just need to learn to go on. Is that if we just learn to surrender then the it'll come to us. So for me, you know, the message and, and now providing service is a combination of doing the podcast and getting men to come on and talk about their journeys because, as you said, different men have a different journey and that could resonate with anyone else who actually listens in. Mm. It's, you know, putting out just some content on the social media sites, which I feel is challenging content but also positive content um, just for, again, and, and I recently had a guy basically copy and paste exactly what I wrote and put it under his own, own post and pretty much said, I couldn't have said this any better. And it's like, excellent. So obviously there is stuff resonating out there and it's just about learning to surrender and actually to, to run with that. So, um, and, and yeah, and that's where I'm, I find I'm at now. Um, and, and for me, there's not, there's no financial gain out of this. Um, and, and I think there's the other purpose as to why you do it is that just sometimes you just go, this is just the right thing to do. And again, if I just trust and surrender in the universe, it, it'll soon, things will show up and, and messages will come through and you just got to be able to tap into those. Well, that point of surrender is a huge one. And I know in our previous conversations, we've talked a little bit about it. Uh, and, and I'll go back to my own mission and purpose in, in this, mm. you know, Sometimes we look at what we do, whether that be a job or how we live and just everything that surrounds us, I guess, the trappings, and we use that as our identity. You know, this is who I am. Um, yes. This is where I live. This is what I drive. This is, you know, all those sorts of things, and, and this is what I do as a job, and that becomes our identity. Uh, I actually think they're byproducts of our identity in, in the sense that um, if we feel we need those things, then, then that that's that's showing something about us. If we if we if if those things essentially follow us um, because of who we are, then that's another perspective, right? Mm. And and for me, whether you know, I've had probably three different let's call them careers in my life, if I can use that term. Um, yet none of those careers have ever left me because the essence of what they are are the essence of who I am. And mm-hmm. I've had to learn how to express those elements in, in my life. Um, and I realise that even what I do now as a job is, is really just um, a framework to release who I am. So I don't, you know, go into my job um, and, and essentially and, and what I do, you know, being a consultant, corporate trainer and a speaker, uh, you know, previously to this COVID thing, travelling around the country, uh, yes. speaking everywhere and, and, you know, talking to so many people face-to-face and, you know, to small, large crowds, to just wherever that sort of took me, you know, that that's not my identity. But it's a if, if you, you like a platform that, that, that I, I work with that allows me to release the essence of who I am. 
uh, and 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 for for many then you know and I think it's a privilege because I've had the the the, the great opportunity to be to add value to people everywhere um, but it's not something I push it's something that comes yeah. to me sort of more in that in that respect but if that finished you know like you know we said okay you pack up that that job's not available anymore it doesn't change anything for me because I never do it for the same reason you do it where because I get a big paycheck at the end of the day. I mean, it's nice when you do, right, because, I mean, we've mm. all got commitments and stuff. But at the same time, I don't give any less to anything that I do um, just because there's not, not you know, money's attached to it, you know. Um, and so I, I think that's an important journey for people to, to, to come to. It's about who you are and where you're adding value and giving that, and whether that's in your job or whether that's, you know, in, in, in your family or whether that's just having a chat at a party or wherever that is, it shouldn't change. Um, the context changes, but who you yes. are never changes. And so those, you know, like we, we could be um, having the, the Christmas, you know, I think we're getting together for Christmas Eve with the big family and we could be having all sorts yep. of chats with different people. And, and in those moments, things come up that, that, that you can, you can breathe into. And when you do, um, you know, you're not getting a paycheck at the end of that conversation. You come out of your yeah, passion. Right. You come out of your purpose. You come out of who you are. And I think that's that that's a better place to start from than than look at what we do all the time and how we you know operate. Otherwise, we define ourselves by what we see, and we don't go inside and find out actually who we are. Uh, and that's you know, to me, the way to live. Yes. No, absolutely, and and I couldn't agree more with that. I want to touch back on you've used the term a couple of times now in, in the chat to date about uh, spirit beings, mm-hmm. and so I'm um, interested to touch back in on your thought about spirit beings, energy, you know, soul, yeah. um, all these different terms. Um, before we you know continue because I know there's there's a whole lot of other journey we want to chat about from you, but yeah, yeah just well, where, where you come from that, aspect. you know. And, and probably, you know, complete disclosure on that. I, you know, everyone has their, their own belief system and, and value system, and I think, you know, that should be respected, obviously. Um, so, you know, whether people agree with you or not, I think it's still your right to be able to have that 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 value system and, and belief. Mm. And I think that's part of sometimes how we, we probably negatively treat people. It's like the cancel culture and all the things that we see that, that go on uh, essentially... You know, and not not giving people the the ability just to be who they are. It's like if you can't be this way, then you know uh, you get cancelled. Um, mm. And and to me, that's that's a destructive and a really dangerous path to go down. Uh, and I, I don't I don't like it at all. Uh, so to give full disclosure on what I mean by spirit, but you know, I've come from um, you know I grew up in a Christian background. Uh, my father was actually a minister. Uh, of a church, uh, but I had a very negative experience with that because uh, of you know what a lot of people I'm sure who've ever been into a church environment uh, understand that that sometimes it can become quite an insular community, can become quite controlling, lots of rules and regulations in the so-called name of God, uh, uh, and you know and good principles and good values, and I really honour that because I definitely got that out of it. Uh, but that that sent me into a bit of a, a season of my life um, where I actually pursued that quite strongly uh, to the point where I actually became a minister myself uh, after my father died for about 12 or 13 years. Uh, and so I ran a church in the inner city suburb of Fitzroy Collingwood, uh, mm-hmm. which was sort of like a real sort of funky contemporary sort of way. And, and so, you know, my spiritual journey really started from there because previously to that, I was in the music industry for 10 years and that yeah. was sort of my life, you know. Uh, so coming into this sort of thing was was catalytic because it happened after my father died and that's sort of what made me go on that spiritual journey because he died quite suddenly. I was 26 years old. It was, it was a massive shock and it made me really mm. question a lot of things about where I was going and that was probably the big, big trigger moment for me about spirituality. So the first thing I did was really... I guess go back to my roots and see what I believed about it and what I what I didn't believe about. But that ended up with me becoming a, an ordained minister, um, and do, doing that for twelve or thirteen years, and 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 I guess getting into spiritual stuff and and all of the things that surround that. But um, in the end, there was a, a real emptiness in me, 
and probably some things that were pretty messed up, uh, which in, ended up being a, a breakdown of the, the marriage I was in at the time, uh, which yep. had four kids, and, um, and it was a very disastrous time. I was actually ended up being completely ostracised by that community. Some of it was made stupid mistakes. Some of it was the nature of the community and just how that sort of stuff works in those environments. But it threw me on a probably on a third stage of spiritual journey, actually trying to work out exactly what I believed and what was really authentic and real. And, and so I was very open to everything at that time. And I studied a lot of different, let's say, faiths and different um, beliefs to sort of try and find out what, what I really thought. Um, but for me, when I talk about a spirit being, uh, what what I've come to in that anyway is that I believe that we're spirit beings first, that we're created as spirit beings, uh, mm. but I believe that the earth being a realm is something that we have to operate in with a certain law of physics, which is why we're given a physical body to operate in. So, you know, I see the spirit being as our true nature. Uh, I see that our, our soul, which to me is the bridge between that that spiritual world and the physical world, um, uh, and that's what connects us to our physical body. So I see mm -hmm. ourselves as a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body, uh, which would be a pretty common view, I would say, for, for, for many people. So yeah. we talk about triune beings. Uh, and so in for that, for me, uh, I see that, that if we're living in alignment, that we're tapping more into who we are as a spirit being because, to me, that's uh, unending. It has no, um, you know, uh, sort of limitation on it is probably where I'm going. That's how we connect yeah. into the greater sense of who we are and how we're all connected uh, and, and you know, and beyond. And our soul is something that is almost like a bit of a gateway to me. Um, it, can be, it can be where we have blocks because there's wounds and, and, and maybe things that have happened to us while we've been in this physical world uh, that have become, become blockages. And so yes. the true essence of who we are, that spirit being, sometimes gets hit on that and doesn't actually get through. And so that's what maybe sometimes uh, creates these need to control or insecurities or, or things that, 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 that essentially block us from being everything that we could be, which is what our spirit being knows. Um, and then the, the body and the physical side, I think a lot of those, what's going on in those two other areas, our spirit and our soul manifests in the body. So, you know, yes. like, you know, I'm sure, you know, it would be a simple thing for most people um, to put two and two together, the the, the impacts of, of stress and all those things that we have that come through our soul and all that sort of stuff often manifests in the body as sickness or, um, you know, tension or, you know, a range mm -hmm. of different things that, that we would see. And so I think part of walking more into a spiritual journey is, is tapping more into that spirit being and finding out who the true essence of our, our real identity is and moving away some of the frameworks and constraints that we have that have, we've been conditioned from in a physical world and actually start to live from another place. So it's almost like for, for most people um, going in reverse because, you know, when we're born, we're conditioned through the physical world because of what we see, what we experience, what we touch, what we feel, you know, what our interactions have told us. Our soul learns through relationship, le learns through experience and all those sorts of stuff. And so sometimes our spirit being is almost sitting underneath that stuff, serving those things because it can't get properly through. So I think awareness to me is when you get to that flash point of where you realise this, hang on, this is all in, got to be, this is all inverted. It's actually got to be reversed. And my spirit being is the bigger part of who I am. And my soul needs to sort of serve my spirit being. And then my body needs to follow suit. And I think yes. when we do that, we come into a more uh, correct alignment of who we are. And that's where discovery is. And that's where we start to tap into spiritual experiences that go outside the physical realm. That's when we start to be able to open up to other concepts that help us grow and learn and, and realize that that we're more than just, uh, you know, you know, here on the planet for a period of time. And then that's it. You know what I mean? Like that, that there's more to it than that. There's, there's a, there's a, um, you know, I guess for many people who believe in an afterlife and all those sorts of things that we're, that mm. we're eternal, you know, those sorts of concepts. And and I think that's, um, you know, what I mean by spirit being anyway, if that <laughs> my long yeah. definition gets there. 
No, no, and, and I think I think that's an absolute beautiful definition and, and how you've actually described it because I think there is a number of – I think people are challenged by that that whole concept and I think to, to your spot on, my, my, my view is um, in as much as a non-judgmental way as I can be is that we are now so conditioned – to be coming purely from the physical body aspect, you know, and that's where all even Western medicine kicks in. So it's sort of like, you know, if I'm sick, it's actually got to do with, you know, basically a physical illness and therefore I have to have physical medications and be on tablets and everything else. And, you know, and then that taps back into, if you look at our soul, then we see that is, you know, manifesting now in depression, anxiety, you know, um, causing suicides and all these other really tough things. And I know, you know, a lot of people are going through and particularly men are going through and that's because it's gone physical, the soul, the things mental and, and they can't tap back into, as you said, to the spirit body. But if we have a, if we could work with people back into ancient, ancient traditions, whether that be, you know, um, ancient wisdom or ancient religions or whatever we want to call about, they used to always come from the other angle. Yeah. You know, they would, they would go the physical ailment you're doing. What, what, what emotional aspect are you not dealing with? And how do we actually help you deal through it, be herbal medicines or through, you know, natural healing or breath work or rituals or ceremonies to actually help you, you know, the old adage of, um, you know, uh, I can't think of the right term, but, uh, you know, the, you know, get the demons out of the body, yep. you know, the, the exorcisms, right? Yeah. yeah. So that whole thing about, you know, how do we release that? And to a degree, that's what some breath work and some of these other yeah. ancient things actually help us to do that we can be tapped back into that true spiritual being i've got a very simple example of how that 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 sort of works uh, about a year ago i went and did like a yearly checkup with the doctor and um and i don't know why uh and maybe some reaction i don't know i maybe need to explore it a bit more but uh, for some reason when i go to the doctor and they check my blood pressure it always goes up really high and and so uh, every time I've gone, you know, it's, oh, you're getting older now, you know, oh, you know, you know, you're at risk of having hypertension and all this sort of thing. And I've said to them, oh, look, I've been told I've got white coat fever. And they sort of look at me like that, you know, in my face, like, oh, yeah, whatever, whatever. No, you're going to need to go on tablets. And so I went to this doctor and same old thing. She goes, look, you know, you're getting, you're old, over 50 now. You're going to have to, um, you know, it's pretty common that everyone goes on these, you know, sort of hypertension tablets and stuff like that. And I'm just like, no, there's no way I'm doing that, you know. And 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 your blood pressure is too high. And so I actually, and I, I actually just said to her, I said, look, I'll tell you what. I said, um, give me, give me um, three months, and I'll come back and I'll get checked, and let's 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 go from there. All right. And she goes, well, no, I really want to give you a prescription and blah blah blah. And I said, okay, I'll take your prescription. I said, but three months, I'm coming back. All right. So yep. what I did was is I thought this is this is bollocks, you know, like I'm I'm not I'm not gonna go go with this. So I went out and bought a really good blood pressure monitor mm. um, that has an app on it, you know, so you can track it every day and it gives you a reading for over a month. So for the next three months, um, I actually put this blood pressure monitor on and I would monitor myself in the morning and at night and just see how my blood pressure was sort of going. Mm. And I it was completely normal, you know. So I tracked this thing for three months and yeah. had data for three months of just this normal blood pressure. And then I turned up the doctor with the for the for the three month physical thing, and 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 she did my blood pressure and it was through the roof again. And she goes, "No, you're gonna, you, you know, you, you're gonna have to go. You know, have you been taking the tablets?" And I said, "No." And she goes, "You need to get them on, on them immediately." I said, well, "Look, I want to show you something to prove that I actually, for whatever reason, have this anxiety coming in here." And I showed her the app with all the reads. I had a, I had like a like a spreadsheet that came <laughs> with all of that <laughs> stuff there, and she couldn't deny the data. Mm. Um, and and, uh, and, you know, and, and what I learned from that, because the, the, the sub story to that too, was that I noticed that certain things that were happening just in my normal day, like even a work day, I, I'd actually start becoming more aware of what I was feeling. And I'd actually mm. slap the blood pressure monitor on and I'd find that my, my blood pressure had gone up. 
Okay. You know, like, for example, like when I got my tax bill uh, yes. one, one month, I looked at it, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And I thought, to the blood pressure monitor. And I put that on and it, sure enough, it was up. And I thought, you know what, let's just sit for a moment. So I just started breathing and controlling my breathing and going yeah. down. And then I waited two minutes, put it back on. It was completely normal. Mm. And so it just really taught me to be aware of those little you know, dynamics that operate in our day because often they're happening at that subconscious level, aren't they? You know, like yeah, someone right. says something or something goes down or you're feeling like you're not going to get your deadline done or your task and so you've got this anxiety and it's setting up our blood pressure unknown to us. So mm. I've tried to become far more aware um, of, you know, those sorts of things. And you know, like these breathing apps that you get on your smartwatch and yes. stuff like I used to get really annoyed by them because they'd sort of, you know, come on and I'd be busy, you know. Uh, but now I really, I actually quite grateful for them because I realise that if I can regulate that every day, that overall that just keeps me in a better sense of uh, like my stress levels are down and, I'm, and yeah. I've got more creative thought, I'm, I'm more productive, I'm actually, you know, able to absorb the things that are going on externally a lot more. Uh, and that all came out of the whole thing of, you know, they would have just subscribed to me a pill to try and get yeah. it down where I, I don't need a pill. I actually need to become more aware of what's going on in my body and I need to actually make intentional decisions and responses around that so that I'm looking after myself because I'm in charge of myself, not a doctor. Yes, uh, and that's awesome. Um, I, I had a similar experience uh, when I used to run and have a heart, same thing, you know, you have your, your heart rate monitor on when you run. And I would actually start to notice to go up. And then I realized that I could control my heart rate by my breathing. And even if I'm sitting, like my, my normal heart rate used to sit about 55. And I could actually get my heart rate down to be sub 50 purely by just tapping into my breath and just slowing my whole breathing down, almost like going into a hibernation, just slowing my whole system down. And you're like, well, that's really powerful. Like I can control what's happening within myself and my own body and I can bring that, that temp, you know, thing. The challenge you have is you know, while you're right in the middle of the heat of that stress or the tension and the anxiety is having the mechanism to catch it and being able to take that 60 seconds or 120 seconds to say, maybe now I need to slow down a little bit here and actually breathe a little bit through this and bring everything back down. Cause we know if you're in a karma, if your blood pressure is down and, and you're in a karma mindset, you're, you're in a much better decision-making process as well. You're going to be less emotionally reactive to, you know, as we spoke earlier about someone giving you feedback or about someone who is highly emotional on their side. And if you, you're being attacked, you can be a lot calmer yeah. about, being able to, to deal on all those aspects. So you're spot on. Um, I want to also touch on, as I know that this, that you do a lot of work with men and it's, you know, you don't publicize it out there. You don't, you know, um, it's not something you put out there, but for many, many years, you've been a mentor for men, you know, young men, um, you know, probably men who haven't found a father figure or anything else. Um, can you talk me through, you know, what you do, part of the reason why you've been doing that, uh, what that looks like for you as well and some of the support you've been offering other men out there? Yeah, I think that that's, yeah, that's more of a, a an organic thing for me. Like I haven't sort of got into a, a thing of setting up some, you know, men's foundation or something like that. Mm, yeah. um, I've, I've just found that as I've got older and I guess as you, you learn from your own situation, particularly relationships, that, um, you know, there, there is a real need, particularly in the in in the younger generation that we're seeing coming through now, to actually be able to draw from the wisdom of those gone before them. And I think that there's a there's a thing in our culture that actually has created more of a dismissive attitude from them for for those that have gone before us, like almost an irrelevance. And that's wrong. Uh, it, it, that's actually a really poor mindset because, you know, going back to your example of ancient cultures and all that, they always drew from, from their elders. They always, mm -hmm. they always saw the wisdom being passed down. Uh, and, and I think, you know, and I'm not speaking on behalf of individuals because I know some individuals would think that way, uh, but I'm talking about as more of a generic culture, uh, you see trends, right? 
And certainly my experience being in the work environment, I'm, you know, I'm not sure what your experience is in, in, in your um, areas that you work, but, you know, I often see people that are in that younger space, let's say from late teens through to that sort of almost early 30s in that sort of stretch. Um, um, yeah, I don't really want to label it with a generational name, but, you know, just, to, just that stretch where there, there's almost like, well, you know, I think that generation has been given incredible gifts, incredible gifts. And so I think that's part of the issue. I think what happens is, is that the, 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 the talent they have and their ability to think, they've been conditioned in a different information age than, than we were, for example. Yeah. Their understanding of how to uh, synthesise technology together to create new ideas to me is amazing. And so they... You know they're they're behind a lot of great innovation that's happening. So I recognise that and acknowledge that. I think that's great. But I think that there's a character, if you like, that doesn't always come with that. An entitlement that sometimes come. And I think yeah. partly our responsibility. I think it's easy to blame a generation, and I don't think that's right either. Because I think it's, mm-hmm. that's actually our responsibility to have nurtured that generation. So what have we done to actually create some of those mindsets? Uh, yeah. Is is to me the question. But still, it's our responsibility to try and adjust some of that stuff where we can. So when it comes to to, to that, I notice that there's a lot of young guys um, that, particularly with how they need to operate within a relationship, have haven't got a clue. Uh, mm. And the things that they see as being um, important in a relationship, uh, which are often things like physical attraction. Um, or, you know, like I think one of the, the, the dangerous things that we've got in our society is the porn culture where a lot of young guys are, are actually objectifying, you know, and, and girls for that matter too now. I, I don't think it's mm. one way. Um, where they're objectifying people and placing expectations in, within a relationship upon their intimacy that it needs to be a certain way. And so then people yes. are performing all sorts of acts and all that stuff where they need to be accepted rather than, than being able to be a genuine sharing. Um, and, 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 I, and I see that mentality come out in people. Mm. You know what I mean? I see that mentality come yeah. out in people. And, and so, like, you know, classic statements that come out, okay, boomer, you know, those sorts yeah. of, which is kind of funny, but at the same time, it's a dismissive statement. And, yeah. and so with young men, um, I just feel like they need, you know, in some respects, some some people have had either a poor representation or have had not really experienced someone who's truly fathered them, who's actually believed in them. Now, you would know this because you're a sports lover. The great coaches are often the great fathers. Um, yeah, that's right. And, and so when you, look at, when you look at young guys, uh, essentially they just need a father. They need someone who will actually go... You know, dude, that's there's a better way. You're better than that. You need you can do this in a different way. You need to understand this about how you treat people or how you see people, because you know the, your value system and your belief system is the only thing people can't take away from you. And you need to nurture that in a way that it actually becomes a valuable thing into the to, to life. And so, a lot of the guys that that come to me are more organic, just through, you know, I guess. Um, relationship and just people that have come in or just through you know work or just anywhere really um and it changes you know sort of people come in seasons you know season what do they say a reason season or a lifetime um and 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 so in some respects you know over the time i've had sort of what i call adopted sons uh who 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 just want to hang around because they recognize the value in having someone who's just um, believing them, and 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 it's in those relationships that I have a lot of those hard landmine conversations mm. because no one else is prepared to do that for them. Yeah, that's right. No? Yeah. And and so I'll, I'll just say, like, man, you, you can't do that. You know, like, there's one guy that 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 I know, and he got a bit of an anger issue. You know, and um, and through this whole thing with the pandemic, had um, you know, he's he's actually got an issue with his nose. Where he can't breathe through one nostril, so he wasn't wearing, okay. he couldn't wear a mask, right? So he'd go to the shops and stuff like that, and get you getting the getting the greasies from everyone, and mm. and some guy actually lashed out at him. Why haven't you got your mask on? You know, and just that sort of stuff. And 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 his response, he he, he goes, I've got a reason, you know. And this guy goes, I don't care what your reason, and you know, just obviously he was just having some public rage. Now I I would. Um, 
you know, I guess for me, I wouldn't respond back with rage. I'd actually abuse the guy and just, you know, however. But being a younger guy, he was like, how dare this guy? This, I've got a reason. Go, Don't you even want to know my reason? And just, just launched at this guy, right? And then it turns into this full-on thing that went out into the car park. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. You know, like that's what we need. And and they're having, they're having a shout out. And and it's it was ready to go nuclear from what he tells me. Like he was ready to thump the guy. And he would have because he's a pretty fit guy. And um and and I said to him, I said, Do you, you, you really reckon that was like the right way to handle it, mate? You know? Um and, and he goes, Oh, well, looking at bay, the guy just got under my skin so much. And I said, um, and I said, Oh, yeah. I said, but you know. How's he going to go away and think about that? How's he going to feel about all of that stuff? I mean, I, I get that maybe what he was doing was a bit unfair, but you've got to try and perhaps put yourself in his perspective. He's full of fear, anxiety, um, and, you know, this pandemic's real to him and it's really scary and, and so he's freaking out and he's projected that onto you. You know, do you think to be a bigger person here that you might have been able to deal with that differently in, in a way where you could have maybe added value in that moment rather than antagonise that moment? You know, so these are sort of conversations I might have, mm. have with them and just sort of say, like, well, what, you know, how could have we done that a little better? And where else is this rage going on? You know, like, and 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 why do you think that's happening? You know, yeah. uh, and and the same the same guy um, came to me during this time of restrictions, and and I could sort of see where some of these things were going, where he normally goes surfing to sort of recenter himself. Um, I'm sure you can appreciate that. And, yes, absolutely. Uh, the ocean and all that stuff, but because of the five kilometre restrictions, couldn't get there. So he was starting to just completely implode. I said, Well, you've got to find other ways within nature and other things within that five kilometres at the moment that actually do the same thing. And in fact, you'll probably discover something new about yourself by going out and, and realigning in different ways. I said, Because if you get into those old habits and that even though they've worked for you, we're in a new season. You, what worked before may not work now. So you've got to find different ways and, you know, and, and what's actually triggering those feelings. So, you know, they're the sort of things that I would have conversations with about young guys, particularly about relationships and how they manage their relationships and what they need to look out for so that they're actually attracting the right person for the right reasons, you know, rather than than for all the, the reasons that are sold on the media. Um, mm. So I, I don't know if that sort of answers it, but it just sort of happens more organically for me. And, you know, I guess people get brought across my, across my path and I just sort of go with it that way. Yeah, but, but that's um, just that example that you've rolled out is just absolutely perfect because, you know, I, I think that's exactly what just providing service into, you know, the men. And, and you're right, you know, women do need it as well. But yeah, you know, I feel, um, yeah, an example I've spoken about before. A friend of mine, she had a really bad interview experience. She walked out the door, rang a friend, and just ended up in tears. And through that, she was able to release. If that was a guy that had the same experience, he'd walk out the door and be angry as all shit, and be yelling and screaming and be abusing people, <laughs> like going to town, right? Almost going, you know, nuclear. And and the problem about that is his mate would have said it would have actually not pulled him up. His mate probably would have supported the anger because that's what we tend to do. I think as guys, we tend it's very to very tribal thing. Yeah, help we validate. Mm. We don't actually go now. Let's stop for a second. Let's think through this. Um, you know, and, and for my you know my my thoughts that I've been thinking through this recently is how we see and talk about others is a reflection of how we see and talk about ourselves. So a lot of that stuff that if I'm projecting out onto you is actually stuff that in reality, if I sat down and thought about what's happening in my own mind about how I talk about myself or how I see myself is probably stuff that I'm not comfortable with or I don't want to go about. So I'll actually just do that. So I'll either judge people or, you know, you'll, gossip against somebody or you know you'll talk about you know uh, overweight people or this people or that sort of stuff you said you start to objectify but in reality you're probably actually there's elements that you're not comfortable with yourself because you haven't accepted who you truly are mm. and and so you know a lot of that's where that whole thing about if someone's projecting onto me i'm like i i feel the projection 
but I feel compassion for you because it feels that there's something that you haven't dealt with on your own. And what can I do to help lean in and help you deal with that and work through that and help release that on your aspect so that you can be more comfortable about who you are, um, you know, and, and less maybe either exploding or imploding as whichever it may need to be. Well, it's the, the, the simple example and the classic example is, you know, we talk about sarcasm being the lowest form of wit, you know, mm-hmm. um, because that's actually coming out of insecurity and it's a de- it's designed to, to put people in their place. You know what I mean? So we use sarcasm to to try and control the distance in the relationship and where we feel they should be if we feel uncomfortable or not secure about what might be happening in a certain context. And and so we do that sort of stuff, you know. So, um, you know, oh, that's something I've had to work on because <laughs> my <laughs> I was brought up that way. And, and as a lot of Australian men are, we tend to be that way. So I've had to I've had to work on how appropriate that is at times. Look, another thing we do with guys is sometimes they have nights and we sit around the fire. So we get okay. a bunch of guys that, that you know, and I'll actually invite, let them invite people in and we just put them around our, our home and we just come and sit around and we just chat outside and just talk about male issues, you know, yeah. um, because they haven't got anyone speaking into their life about that sort of stuff. And, you know, and all the usual sort of, I guess, guy things come up um, and, and it gives a forum. And I think one thing about any type of, of self-help type personal development thing is, is creating the, creating environments for it, you know, creating mm-hmm. atmospheres so that it's conducive for it to happen. That's why when you go to like, you know, a conference or, you know, one of those sorts of things, it creates a certain atmosphere that, that creates a certain reaction that can often break you through into new things. And so I'm big on trying to find those sort of atmospheres that, that actually brings out the things that often we don't in other environments. Uh, um, yep. so you know that's another thing that I do in that space yeah and, and and that's it's about making people feel safe to be vulnerable mm, absolutely. um you know and that and that's the whole and people and, and to to loop this all the way back people feel safe to be vulnerable when they feel that they can allow their true being and they they that true being's already tapped into that energy so, so if, if I'm and yourself are creating that non-judgmental, safe environment, energetically, they pick up on that and that taps into the, um, you know, the spirit uh, part, of, part of them. And then that they go, oh, I've actually found that part that I didn't really exist and I've tapped into it. Now I'm going to be able to release all these conversations and talk through stuff. So, so I think that's the key if, if you're living in your spirit being in opening that space, it will connect into the spirit being without the other person knowing about it. And then they'll go, I've never spoken about that to anyone else before. And they don't understand why, but it's because there's been that energetic connection that's enabled that to take place. Yeah, I often use the term frequency, that we're on the same frequency. And and I think mm. and if you're not necessarily articulating or consciously having conversations about it, you it's like you get around people and you just feel a connection is, is often the way people describe it. And, and, you know, where some people you actually like, oh, I just almost feel repelled. There's something about them that's actually p- pushing me away. And I really tune into that stuff with, with people um, because there's often reasons behind it. Uh, and so sometimes I find that that connection thing is more purpose-driven. In other words, the mm-hmm. purpose or reason why I feel that connection, there's, if you like, mandate or mission behind it. There's something of value that needs to happen here. There's a transaction that needs to happen here. It's not just, oh, yeah, I feel connected or whatever it is and you just recognise it. It's actually got purpose to it in, in my mind anyway. And so I find that happens in a lot in guys-type connections where there's just this connection, there's a frequency that resonates and so therefore there's there's a purpose behind it, there's a mandate behind it that something has to happen here. And whether that's mm. for a one-off thing or whether you journey with someone for a while. I've got people that have been more casual, if you like, um, and I've got people that are in my life that probably be in my life for a very long time that we journey with because there's just a, a greater connection in there and a greater sense of unified destiny about how we how we engage with each other. And so, mm. you know, that that's how I sort of roll with everyone, really. Yeah, so... I think that's a that's a really good summary exactly in that space. Um, 
for me, there was probably, as I know that we're um, probably starting to, you know, come up on the time. Yeah. So um, I know there is elements that I know we could talk to and talk about how we turn that frequency into abundance and how we mm. actually, you know, work through that, how, um, you know, I uh, we didn't quite get to it, but I know that, you know, there is some of your abilities is for you to actually talk, you know, work into other realms, you know, sure. fourth, fifth realms and everything else. But um, again, that's probably 20, 30 odd minutes worth of conversation um, that we, we could probably get into. So I think that we might, uh, I might tap into you as part of season two for the unearth man, which will be next year. And I think we can yeah, explore sure, some, sure. some, some more of those things in the, in the next conversation. So um, to, to round it off, um, because we have touched on a lot of stuff about you know yourself and the spirit being and and particularly around men as well what's maybe a, a key message or you know a, a parting bit of wisdom that you might uh, be able to you know feed out to you know this current generation or or, or even the, the men that are listening in there to you know what can they actually do to maybe tap back into that spirit being or or learn how to be more engaged into that into that space well probably one thing let me just re- reinforce what i was just saying but maybe in a different way i think it's really important that we pay attention to when we start to feel connections with people you know, um, particularly from a from a mentoring basis or from a point of view, we feel like we can learn something from somebody and actually pursue it. I think we get really afraid to do that stuff. I think sometimes we 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 pick up on the on the thing, but we for, for whatever reason we might feel insecure or or if we have a low opinion of ourselves, we may not risk and reach out to someone in that space. And 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 I think you know it only takes one time where you do reach out like that. And connect with somebody, and and be brave enough to do it. That can absolutely renovate your life and take you in a whole new, new way. So you know you can be one decision away um, from maybe moving through things that have hindered you or have plagued you for years or have stopped you and 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 caused fear and and constriction in your life. And so maybe let's just talk about that. Just if you if you pick up on that connection, you feel a positive energy when you connect with someone, pursue it. Don't just don't just recognize it, pursue it, because that means that there's something there. And you never know what will come out of that that could ap- absolutely be amazing. So yeah, I'll leave you with that. Ah, uh, thanks, man. That's a that's a beautiful message to finish off on. Um I, th- I think in some of the stuff I've read, the, there is views, there is no such thing as a coincidence. You know, that person was meant to come in your life. And then if they pop back in more than once, it's because there's a message that either you've got to give them or they've got to give you that didn't actually take place. So listen to it and connect with it. And, and you know, don't just go, it was a coincidence. There was a reason why that took place. And as you said, explore it. Um break down some of the barriers and and go from there. So thanks, man. Beautiful way to finish off. Um, As I said at the intro, I'm super proud to, you know, have you as my brother-in-law. Love you deeply. It's been an amazing journey that, uh, that we've, we've been on. And, and, and now that, um, you know, I find myself in, in, in a much, different space from an openness you know i'm i'm i think our christmas conversations in quiet corners actually might be fundamentally different to <laughs> you know um as the consulting gig going and, and how's that going so i'm really looking forward to uh, yeah, spending yeah, much yeah. more time in in, in in much more open conversations as we move forward so maybe you can bring your recording device and we can do a christmas special <laughs> 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 that could be intriguing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Again, look, thanks again for jumping on. I really appreciate the fact that you've allocated some time. I'm re- extremely grateful for that. Um, you have just a, a wonderful, beautiful day, and uh, we'll definitely touch base soon. Yeah, appreciate it, Steve. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, Dave. Chat later. Hey, all. So that's uh, my beautiful brother in law, David Patmore. Um, I'm so excited for, I think, the journey that Dave and I can now go on. Um, recently, we, we had a beautiful couple of hour conversation. It was just really open. And um, now, you know, I've probably broken down all my barriers and, and you know, uh, learned to be, you know, had a different view about Dave and how he works. I'm, I'm so excited about exploring more, more with him as we move forward. 
So that pretty much wraps up uh, episode 25. Um, and to, to be honest, it's a bit of a milestone to, to get to episode 25. I think most podcasts last about seven episodes. I had a target this year to do 13, but the fact that we're now at 25 and we're not at the end of the year, um, I'm just super excited. So um, there's probably more to come. There's a few more interviews towards the end of the year, and there will be a bit of a, a Christmas special, which is probably me reflecting back on the year. So that's it for now. Uh, have a wonderful day and sending you much love and peace. The Unearthed Man. <laughs>